Now, one thing about doing a chat show, you never know what's going to happen next. I've never had anyone actually shave on the show before. <laughs> Thank you, you've wanted that, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> I have to say, it's come, up, it's come up pretty well, Dave. Yeah. It's not, yeah. You're not chafed. I was a bit worried it would like, be a different colour, like when you move the sofa. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so am I in profile now? Because I can't tell. Yes, yeah, so that's perfect. Here. Okay. Please, sir, can I have some more? More? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Dave Gorman. <laughs> Ah, oh, fabulous. So, welcome back. Nice to be here. Thanks for having me back. And, um, so not only have you grown the sideburns back, but they've become a beard. Yeah, no, I, I um, I had, uh, I, I got all serious. I turned 31 and I thought I want to, I want to be a novelist because all comedians who turn 30-something decide they want to be novelists. And, uh, and my, my manager set up a meeting with a publisher and he was sort of trying to say, are you really serious about this? And I looked the publisher in the eye and said, I'll tell you how serious I am. I'm actually considering growing a beard. <laughs> and he went, you've got a deal. <laughs> so, so you've now written a novel? Uh, no, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got just grown the beard. Yeah, OK. And been given the money, and I've spent the money, and I haven't written the novel. <laughs> yeah. Are you allowed to do that? No, I'm in a bit of trouble. <laughs> um, every day for about, I don't know, six months, I would sit at the computer going mad with a blank screen. And I, I'm displacement activity. I'm, it's to, I'm connected to the internet and things. So mm. I'm there one day, and I go through all my emails first and distract myself. And I got this email from somebody saying, uh, oh, I think, I, I'm guessing, was Australian. Right. I don't know. Uh, but his email said, good day, Davo. <laughs> it's a good guess. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> did you know that you are a Google whack, Steve-o? And I'm sitting there thinking I'm being insulted by someone on the other side of the world. I need to know about this. I wrote back saying, what the hell is a Google whack? And he told me, and it ruined my life. It prevented me from writing the novel. It meant it's the reason I spent all the money the publishers gave me. It's, it caused all the trouble. <laughs> right. <laughs> so you better tell us what a Google whack well, is. A okay. Google whack is, it's a word game. It's, it, do you know the search engine Google? If you put two words into Google and you press search, normally it comes back saying here are 8,947 different pages. This is if you're trying to find a website yeah, on, the, yeah. on the net. But if you, if you put two words into Google and then press search, well, it, it goes away. It looks at over three billion pages, basically, and it brings back every single page that contains the two words you told it to look for. So normally there'll be thousands of hits. If you put in two words and it comes back saying here is the one and only one page, that there is a Google whack when only one page out of over three billion contains the two words you're, you're looking for. Right, so what this guy was telling you, that your website had yeah. got two words that he'd, no other website yeah, had. Yeah, he'd put the words Francophile and namesakes into Google, hit search, and it led to DaveGorman.com. Right. So I, I sat there, I wasted about eight hours of my, of my day there and then finding one. But I so what you do, one. you type in any two odd words. Yeah, and you just keep and trying and you keep trying. And you trying, keep trying. Okay. And eventually I got one with the words dork and turnspit. <laughs> that led to, uh, led to a website that I, I imagine you've probably looked at before, Frank. Uh, it was called womenanddogsuk.co.uk. Yes, I know. I subscribe. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> is it, but, but the thing is, I, I, I went to look at it and I, I was nervous. It's this kind of thing, you, you, you know, you have a finger on the mouse thinking, do I really want to go and have a look at this? I, I live alone and I still checked over my shoulder to check nobody else was there before <laughs> I got on that. I got to it. It was a, it's a brilliant website. It's just the most innocent thing in the world. It's pictures of women and dogs. Yeah, you've, nothing you've, else. Well, you've, we, we actually, um, we looked it up, and uh, I thought maybe you might have not made it up, but you might have. No, no, it's it real. might be more to it than just women and dogs, but it's women and dogs. It's just, it's just like domestic secondhand like, photos. Like this. <laughs> whole website full of that. Yeah. And a bit of variety, like, there's two women and a dog on, on the next one. There you go. It's beautiful, isn't it? Did you notice, by the way, that is the smallest Bartley's bank in the world. <laughs> Look at that. And just for extra convenience, they've put a stepladder in the doorway. <laughs> now, in the past, Dave, just in case yeah. anyone is not fully aware of your work, you've done things like 
travelled around the world to find other Dave Gorman. Yeah. You've wrote to local papers asking their readers to su suggest ways of improving the world and then carried them out. Yeah. And the last time you was on here, you were literally following your horoscopes every day, no matter what they told you to do. Yes. So, just to set up yeah, the yeah, kind yeah, of a man yeah, yeah. you are. All of that was meant to end when I grew the beard. The, the, yes. the beard was me saying, I'm having enough of that, I'm growing up, I'm getting responsible. Well, the and... beard's changed nothing. I know on. it has, I know, because I got sucked into this Google-whacking <clears throat> thing. Then what happened on New Year's Eve? Oh, I just... I thought... I had a bit of a big New Year's Eve party. And I was with a load of mates. We'd, we'd gone into town and we'd gone back to my house. There's like ten of us left. We're all drinking and chatting. And then I woke up on New Year's Day in Heathrow Airport <laughs> with a ticket to Washington, D.C. in my pocket, paid for on my own credit card, because I had New Year's Eve with ten of my evilest friends in the world. <laughs> who cajoled and poured tequila down my neck and challenged me to see if I could find ten Google Wax in a row where you meet a Google Wack and they find the next one and then they find the next one and they find the next one and you keep going down until you've got a, a chain of ten. Over what period of time? Uh, before my 32nd birthday. Which was? Uh, March the 2nd. So that's quick. In January and February this year, I did about 90,000 miles. My average speed for the first eight weeks of the year was over 50 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> so then the quest was on? Yeah. Well, even then, I didn't really want to do it to begin with. But I, just, but I went to Washington and I was there for a week. The first guy I met in Washington, he didn't understand that I didn't want to do it. He forced me and he booked the ticket for me and persuaded me. I'd, I'd met five in a row before I'd even started trying. Oh, so it was going quite Yeah. Well. And then it all, it all went wrong in, um, in Texas. I, I, oh, I, I don't... I'm, getting, I'm genuinely a bit concerned about me and drink. And I'm not just saying that. I actually am. And I know you know you've, you've had your problems with drink. Yes. And... D yeah. d I'm, I'm, I didn't manage to make a career out of it. Though. No, I know. <laughs> but that's what worries. It's, easy to, it's easy to get out of it if it isn't what pays your mortgage. Yes. But I've got people sort of going, go on, have another drink, you might get another show out of it. And they keep persuading me. Yeah. I woke up... The, I thought the worst hangover I could ever have would have been the one New Year's Day. Towards the end of January, I was in Texas. I'd met a chain of five in a row and then it all went wrong and I was desperately upset and I was in this hotel room in Austin, Texas, and I decided, actually, I, I thought, right, I'm going to get rid of the beard. The beard has jinxed me, it's too much. So I, I kind of, I, I thought, I'll go and get drunk first. <laughs> they wouldn't, they're so hard in America. I went to this, all these bars, they wouldn't let me get in because I didn't have any ID with me. And they just, I like, they think you might not be 21. <laughs> I couldn't grow this beard when I was 21. I mean, I'm like, obviously, I'm 31. I was going mad with them. And then I realised I got my passport with me, went back to the hotel, got my passport, went out to get drunk. I woke up the next morning, I got out of bed and thought, that is the strangest hangover I've ever had. <laughs> my head was completely clear, that was absolutely fine. My stomach was just sort of turning, but, like, not the fast cycle, just sort of nice and gently turning. Mm. But I had a hangover in my arm. <laughs> I, I went to the bathroom and thought, I, I need to know what's going on with my arm, and I was still wearing a shirt, so I lifted up my sleeve. And can I say before I do this, um, I'm sorry, Mum. <laughs> she doesn't know about this. She doesn't? No. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> is she very elderly? <laughs> Uh, no, but she's about to get a bit greyer. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a tattoo of a Texas driver's licence on my arm. <laughs> and got... I've got my ID now, haven't I? <laughs> they can't turn me away now. I was... I can... and then it all came flooded. I was on the streets in Austin, Texas, walking up and down the road with my shirt rolled up on my... over my shoulder, ranting at the bouncers, going, I've got my ID now, haven't I? You want a driver's licence? Have I got a driver's licence on me? Yes, I have! <laughs> I look at that every day of my life, and every day of my life, I swear I see his little lips go, you wank. <laughs> <laughs> so, look, did you, did you complete your quest, or are you prepared to answer that question? Um, it's a bit like asking Agatha Christie who yeah. the murderer was. Because there is a book, isn't there? I've written a book, it's not a novel. No. Sadly. It's the story of your adventure to find those ten yeah. people waxing. Yeah, 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 out in January. Okay. First, yeah. So, uh, it's, it's really aimed at the uh, book token market. <laughs> I think, you should, I think you should set off on a quest 
where you get tattooed in 25 different countries. Big, great, big, elaborate <laughs> tattoos that cover your whole body. <laughs> That's what I think. Here's my Christmas <laughs> present to you, Dave. So, <laughs> there you go. You have your mission, ladies and gentlemen, Dave Gorman.